Do you guys ever get annoyed trying to use a dial to control your 3D printer? I know I do. So I've been trying to shift all my work over to Octoprint, uh, basically allowing me to control everything remotely. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through changing your filament with Octoprint. Obviously, there will be one part where you have to get up to actually swap out the filament. Can't really do much about that. But outside of that, everything else can be done remotely um, just through the UI. So let's go ahead and get started with that. But before we do, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. All right, so I've got Octoprint up here. Uh, I am assuming that you do have Octoprint already set up. If you don't, I did a video on how to set that up. I'll link to that in the description below. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is install the plugin that helps with the change filament process. So let's go ahead and get started on that. First, we want to go to the settings uh, section and then go down to plugin manager right here. And then uh, we want to get more. And then from here, we can just search for filament. Uh, and then we want this guy right here, uh, change filament, and then we just go to install. And then once this install is done, we got to go ahead and restart. So go ahead and do that really quick. Doesn't take long at all. And then I am going to walk you through some of the issues I had with the default settings and give you some recommendations as well here. Because um, out of the box, the default settings just don't work. Um, it will just throw an error on the printer. I've tried it with four printers and that ended up being the case. Um, and there's not much documentation on that specifically online. I uh, ended up digging into it further by going into the code that was available on GitHub and then figuring out what it was doing, but we'll go back to that in a second. All right, so that's installed now. So if we go back up to settings, then down un under plugins here, you would see the change filament plugin. That's the one we just installed. Um, they did make a note here that when walking through it, you do have to heat the hot end before you can actually change the filament, which is uh, pretty easy to do. All right, um, there are a couple changes we're gonna wanna make in here, but first let's just go ahead and try to print it with the default settings and I'll show you what happens. So let's go ahead and close this. And then um, I'm gonna connect to my Indoor 3 Pro here. And you can see I've got the camera set up here uh, watching this so we can see it real time and I got another camera off to the side that I'll use as part of the video as well. All right, so first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is heat up the bed to the, uh, not the bed, sorry, heat up the extruder to the uh, change filament temperature. So if you just go to tool and then right here, just go to set PLA and that will start the preheat process. Uh, it's pretty easy to do and this will just take a minute or two. Now up to temperature, we're showing uh, actual at uh, 178, so we're good there. So if we go over to control, um, we're going to want to, if you actually have a print going, you'll just go to park. That will uh, raise the z-axis a little bit, kind of move it off to the side so you can do the filament swap. You can also integrate this into a filament sensor as well. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but it is possible to do. All right, so first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is go to unload, and you'll see that we're gonna get an error. If we go over to terminal, we can see the actual output, and then right here, um, send G1 E500 uh, F1600. So it's trying to do a retraction of 500 millimeters with a speed of 1600. Um, that's not supported by the printer or any printer that I've tested, uh, and there's not much documentation on how to fix this. If you start Googling around, they start talking about trying to update firmware and make sure you have a hard connection and you're not trying to use wireless or anything like that. None of that really made a difference for me. I'll, I'll show you the actual fix. All right, so let's go back to settings, and I'll make another 
let me point out one more thing in here before we start making changes. So as you can see, it's set to 500 right now. If we just set this to 400 and try it again, you can see here that it's actually sending the same exact command as before. Uh, makes no sense, but uh, it turns out what it's actually doing is it's saving this configuration in memory at startup. So if you're making any change after startup, you have to actually restart Octoprint. All right, so let's go to make those changes and we'll go ahead and restart it. Then I'll show you what it actually looks like. Uh, so for the three printers that I've tried with, the largest unload and load length I was able to do was 200 millimeter. Um, I'm not sure if you would want to go further than that. I know if you have a Bowden drive, it, the tube's typically 500 millimeter, but you're not going to be trying to have it totally push the filament out. You're going to want to swap it out. Well, you have to swap it out anyways by hand. So you'll just finish um, pulling the filament out and then pushing the filament back in. So you will want to play around with these to see uh, what makes the most sense for you. You might only want to do a load length of 50 or 100. I was playing around with 100, but in many cases that was too much. So I'm just going to leave it at 50 with the load speed. Um, I did increase the speed to uh, 200 and I was having no issues there. I also tried bumping it up to 500 and 1000, which ended up being way too fast. That was basically just spinning the gear uh, because it couldn't push the filament through the extruder quick enough. So you just got to find the good balance there. Uh, that's not really an issue on the unload speed because you're pulling it out at that point. So for the unload, on the Indoor 3 Pro, I was doing 200 just because of the Bowden drive. Uh, if you have a direct drive system, that's going to be too much. So you're going to want to figure out what makes the most sense. Um, you might be able to get away with 100 or maybe even 50 on some of the direct drive systems because there's just not that much uh, filament between the driver itself and the extruder end. All right, so let's go ahead and change this to 200. All right, so just to go over the changes I just made here, the unload length, I changed from 500 to 200. Uh, the unload speed is fine at 1600. Uh, the load length I'm leaving at 500 for now, and the load speed I set to 200. Just it makes it quicker for it actually to load it, assuming everything is up to speed. I mean up to temperature. All right. Um, I prefer to do a small retraction before park. Uh, it just kind of pulls the filament up a little bit before it actually stops. Uh, just prevents any, uh, I guess, stringing. And the other setting that I wanted to point out here, well, I guess there's two more. The Z lift is um, what it's doing before the unloading. It's going to raise it by 30 millimeter. Uh, in most cases, that's going to be too high. I was playing around with it at 10 earlier. Um, again, that's going to be something you might want to play around with and make a change uh, based on how your printer is set up and what you're doing. And then the other thing is the park speed. They've got set to 5,000. Um, this isn't feasible. Uh, even in the documentation, here, let me jump over to GitHub. Um, they're showing down here uh, for most systems, including the CR10, it's saying put the X park to 150. Um, and then for some of the smaller ones, it's 100 to 120. I left the Indoor 3 Pro at 150. I had no issues. Um, again, I don't know why it ships with these settings. Uh, they're not usable. Uh, maybe they just want you to learn how everything works. Uh, but it does make it a lot more, or a lot less user friendly, I should say. Uh, so let's go and set this to 150. All right, and then we can save it. Now again, saving it is not going to take effect until you actually reboot the system. So I'm just going to go up to System and Restart Octoprint. And this will take just a couple seconds. And while that's rebooting, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. All right, we should be back online here shortly.
All right, we are back on. So let's go ahead and just connect to the printer again really quick. And then set our temperature back to PLA or 180. Uh, you can see it was already at 150, so it doesn't have far to go here. Oh, then I forgot to mention this earlier, this change filament section here, uh, it gets added with that plugin. Uh, so if you don't have the plugin, you will not see this whole section. Uh, and we are about up to temperature. Uh, if you have later versions of the Marlin firmware installed that have the um, change filament uh, settings and everything built in, you can run this M600, which basically just kicks that off, but you will have to actually use the control box. Uh, you will have to acknowledge the change filament and then um, the end of the purge as well at the control box. You won't be able to do that remotely. So I was not messing around with that. I'm trying to do as much remote as possible. But I wanted to let you know that is an option if you are running the Marlin firmware that has that option. All right, we should be up to temperature, which, yeah, we're good. All right, so now we can go ahead. I'll just do park real quick to show you what that does. just raised it that 10 millimeters that I had set um, so if you were running a print you would want to hit pause over here on the print itself and then go to park so it lifts it off of the print a little bit uh, that way when it goes to actually resume the print you don't have any issues with extra stringing or anything like that being left on the print all right so now we can go ahead and do the unload as you can hear it's starting the actual unload process it's going to push it back through. You can see right here where it's pushing the filament up a little bit. And then if we go and look at the code that was sent, um, we've got the 200 millimeter at 1600. Uh, so it did actually send the correct um, settings this time, which for some reason, I don't know why that's not documented anywhere. I spent several hours trying to track that down. Um, it's an easy fix once you know what it is, but when you don't know what it is, it's, um, it's stressful. All right, so let's go back over to control. I'm going to go ahead and swap out that filament with a different one really quick, and then uh, we'll go ahead and do the load. All right, so I went ahead and swapped out that filament. I put a new roll of uh, Hatchbox filament in there. Um, I'll link to that in the description below, but in my opinion, at least from the filament that I've used, that's probably the best performance for the price. It's really good filament. Um, also, if you don't know how to change a filament on this, I did a couple of videos on changing the filament on a Indoor 3 with a Bowden drive and on another printer with direct drive. So I'll link those in the description below as well. All right, so let's go ahead and do the load. So this would be 50 millimeters being pushed through. And you can see here a little bit, I should probably zoom in if I could, um, that it's starting to push out. Yep, right there. All right, I did just go ahead and check there. Um, 50 millimeters was not enough, so I'll go ahead and do another purge. Let me go see how that one looks. All right, so I did not like how that looked. It was kind of bundled together. Um, again, this is part of the process when you're setting this up for the first time on a printer is figuring out what settings work best for that printer. So let's go ahead and walk through this again. I'm gonna slow down um, the actual uh, load speed. I'm gonna back that down to 100 and see how it looks there. With the other filament, that was just a roll that I had laying around. I think it came with the printer. Um, that one, um, it worked fine at 200, but it doesn't mean that all of them will. All right, so let's go ahead and just restart Octoprint again.
right, we're back online. Let's go ahead and connect and go to temperature. Go ahead and set that again. If you are having issues with the filament purge, you could increase the temperature. That would help as well. Uh, at 180, we're on the lower end of the scale for PLA, which should work in most cases, but it might not work for all filaments. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, let's jump back over to control here and do another load. All right, that looks to be coming out much better. But again, it is going slower, so it will take a little bit more time. All right, so that looked much better. Um, what you're looking for there is you want to see the filament coming out in more of a straight, even flow. And then if you're doing a longer purge, start, it should start to kind of circle at the bottom. Um, that's what this did. So I think we're good to go with these settings here. Now that we have these settings in place, we know what it's going to be for this printer. So basically, they're going to be saved. If you are going back and forth between printers um, with the same Raspberry Pi or Octoprint setup, uh, you will have to record them and then swap them out. But again, if you're only using um, this with one printer, you have them and that's it. So that's the entire process. All right, now that that's done, we can go ahead and just load a test print here. Um, let's, we'll go ahead and do this one. All right, so this is just a temperature tower. So let's kick this guy off. That's one reason why I love Octoprint. You can just kick everything off from here. I already had it sliced. Um, I did go over all of that in the setting up the Octoprint video that I did. So if you have questions about that, just check out that video. Again, I'll link to it in the description below. All right, so it's starting to preheat everything. Um, starting to preheat the bed. Once that's done, it should switch over to the extruder. And that's really all there is to it. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. I've been pretty good about responding. All right, guys, I hope you found that video helpful. For me personally, uh, walking through that process with printers like the Endor 3 is really a lot easier than trying to uh, run through all the controls and back out the filament and such. Um, it's not quite as useful for printers that have the built-in change filament or the M600 feature, but it's still a lot better than trying to use that control panel. Um, I know I personally got hung up a lot on getting this set up because of that extrusion length error. There's really no documentation on that out there. So I wanted to make sure to get something put together for you guys so you don't run into the same issue. So make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.